The first rule that we're going to cover in this video is the product rule. This is the correct way to take the derivative of two functions that are multiplied together. You take the first and multiply times the derivative of the second, and then add that to the second function multiplied times the derivative of the first. There's a cute little way to remember this. If you call the first function 1 and the second function 2, then you can remember this rule by thinking 1d2 plus 2d1. Now you should memorize the product rule. However, we don't want to just blindly memorize without understanding. Where does the product rule come from? I'm going to show you a proof. You're not going to have to reproduce this proof, but it helps with understanding so that you don't just memorize the formula with absolutely no clue as to why this is true. The definition of derivative says that this thing that we want to take the derivative of, we need to plug in x plus h, plug in x, and subtract. This is so interesting is that if you look at this quantity, the algebra just does not work out. You can't just like pull the derivative of f and the derivative of g out from this quantity. This is totally invalid, incorrect algebra. This is not equal to the derivative of f times the derivative of g. Just look at the algebra. This stuff is not working out. So the correct way to do this is a little tricky. Here you can see on the next line, I didn't do anything yet. I had just made some space for myself. The correct quantity to insert here is f of x plus h times g of x. You can see that it's subtracted and it's also added. So I didn't change the problem by inserting these terms. So now I can just use basic algebra in order to take the first two terms and pull out f of x plus h. Now for these other two terms, they have g of x in common. So I'm going to factor out the g of x and I'll be left with f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. That's the product rule. This is 1d2 plus 2d1. This is where the product rule comes from. Wow, that is amazing stuff. Okay, let's look at an example here. We've got functions that are multiplied. The one function is here, e to the x. d2 is the derivative of the second part. And then we also have 2d1. 2 is just copied down. And d1, the derivative of e to the x, is e to the x. You might want to just clean it up a bit for the final answer. Next, we're going to cover the quotient rule. So this is how to take the derivative if you have one function divided by another function. What you do is you take the one that's on the bottom and multiply times the derivative of the one that's on the top. And then you subtract the top function times the derivative of the bottom and then divide by the denominator squared. Luckily, there's a cute little rhyme for remembering this. Refer to the top function as high and the bottom function as low. Is that we've got low d high. Low is the g from the bottom. d high is the derivative of the top minus high d low over the square of what's below. And there you go. That's the quotient rule. Let's look at an example. The quotient rule is used when there's a quotient, when things are divided. Does that mean you should always do the quotient rule no matter what without thinking about anything, without applying any critical skills? Of course not. What you want to do is look at a quantity and decide, is there something I could do to make this problem easier? That there's a little bit of algebra that you can use to simplify this. What's that saying? If you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Don't do that with the quotient rule. Actually look at what you're doing. In this case, if we just do a tiny bit of algebra, we can completely avoid doing the quotient rule altogether. The x cancels here, and then we have x to the minus 3 divided by x, which is x to the minus 4. Now this problem is super simple. I can take the derivative of e to the x to get e to the x and apply the power rule for the second piece. That was a lot easier than doing the quotient rule. Think about what is the easiest, least painful way to do this problem. For for this one, there's no way you're going to be able to simplify this and make it any easier in terms of taking derivatives, so we're just going to have to use the quotient rule. We're going to do our low d high, the bottom function, multiply times the derivative of the top here, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now we need high d low, and now I just need over the square of what's below. There's a tiny bit of simplifying I can do with this one, such as pulling the e to the x out of the quantity and writing the negative one half power as over the the square root. This is my final answer. So I hope that you'll challenge yourself and go look for more problems in the book. Check out the homework online and we'll see you in class soon.